Hundreds of anti-GM protesters took advantage of the good weather to demonstrate at Britain's first ever open-air trial crop field of modified wheat. A heavy police operation at the Rothamsted Research Centre in Hertfordshire prevented any protesters breaching the security fence after activists threatened to trash the crop. Porrick O'Brien reports. The debate over GM crops raged in the home counties today. Pro-GM scientists set out their stall among the buttercups. About 400 anti-GM protesters did the same. I say raged, it was all more picnic than protest. Bar a gentle squaring up to police lines at one point. They were trying to get to a field at the Rothamsted Research Centre where a small batch of GM wheat is being grown. We're about a mile from the main road driving to the site and everywhere there's security. There are checkpoints along the road. Just here as you can see, look, 10 police officers. Fort Whitey, please. Activists had threatened to trash the crop. We were allowed in for 20 minutes. So this is what the hoo-ha is all about. Those squares you can see marked out by the sticks are the actual genetically modified wheat. Then we have a sort of buffer zone around that of barley here, this ploughed area here, a further buffer zone, and an alternative a crop of ordinary wheat there. It's also worth pointing out this fence. There's a two metre high security fence that runs all along this site. If it works, the genetic modification means the wheat will naturally produce a pheromone that deters green and black fly. Most of the scientists at Rothamsted would say we are the greenest people on the planet. Here we have an opportunity, uh, it's not the only way you could do it, but an opportunity to replace the use of insecticides on the wheat crop if it works. Most people would say that's a great idea if we can reduce the use of any kind of pesticides. So how would you describe the activists? We've not even been able to get them to engage us quite honestly. There's a lot of rhetoric, we don't even know who they are. Anybody who doesn't want an answer to a scientific question is really missing the point. This is who they are, and if it is rhetoric, it's convinced many. We feel like public opinion is still totally against GM in this country. 14 of the supermarkets have totally banned GM. You have the public debate and you talk about it in public, and then you do the science out in the open air. If this wasn't an open air research thing, they can do whatever they like in the laboratories, absolutely. If the point of today was to vandalise a GM crop, it didn't work. If the point of today was to have a debate, it did. Well, I'm joined now by Theo Simon, who was at today's protest and is a member of Take the Flower Back, and Professor Graham Jellis, a professor in applied plant pathology at Nottingham University and a member of the British Crop Production Council. Theo Simon, you failed to stop the, the trial. What happens now? I think that what has happened here today is that we are getting a debate, but it's a public debate where we can start to lay the issues back before the British people, because this isn't really just a test of aphid resistance. I think that this is a test, as far as the biotech corporations are concerned, of the European resistance. I think this is an attempt by the biotech corporations to start to soften up the climate in this country towards bringing back GM crops. Graham Jellis, that's, that's exactly what you want to do, isn't it? You, you, you want us to think again about this technology certainly... ten years after yes. we <laughs> kicked it out the door? We certainly want it to be thought about again. I mean, it's been a very successful technology in many parts of the world. Ten percent of the world's crops are now GM. That's often forgotten when we, we think about the European but situation. But what's changed in the ten years to change the public's mind? I think that uh, when... when uh, biotechnology first came uh, to the fore, which was in the late 80s, early 90s, there was a, it was the, the resistance was a mixture of different things, which included um, resistance to big corporations, uh, concern about the safety, and also concern about the environment. Well, these tri the trials have been done on a large scale now. I mean, then it's not just pra in practice. In, in theory, it's in practice. Well, um, I mean, theory, uh, around has, the world, has, has, has anybody been, what been? Is what is the practical uh, experience of farmers and growers? Who re let's, re let's remember, the wheat growers of Britain are not asking for GM wheat. What is the practical experience of farmers and growers around the world? And I can tell you, there is increased pesticide use in South America, Roundup pesticide. There are super weeds appearing in America now, as you know, which are Roundup tolerant. And then when you've built the pesticide into the plant, BT, 
you now have species of insect which are BT resistant and farmers are weeding crops by hand in America now and it's interesting that this experiment has happened after the man who helped to develop the first Roundup Ready canola crop in Canada, uh, he has become the head, uh, Professor Maloney, of the Rothamsted Institute, which is a 150 years great record of conventional research. And what has happened to canola in Canada is that there is now 90% of the canola genes are, are contaminated with GE traits and the Canadian canola organic industry has collapsed because they can't grow it anymore and the American, the Canadian farmers, I'm sorry, have said if you want GE, you can't have others. Let, let's try and avoid the jargon because we're talking about BT, GM, oh, sorry, GE. Sorry, yeah. um, it, it's all biotechnology. We're, 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 yes, we're talking well, about well, it's all, all, all to this point about pesticides yes. because yes, well, indeed, this, this has been found yes. that you solve one problem but you, you discover another. It's, you must not confuse genetic modification with a particular trait. This is, is a technology. It can be used for a whole range of different things. It's been used, for example, to, improve, to increase the vitamin A, which people can consume in the poor world. Where are they growing it's, it? Well, it's only just you know, coming on the market. It's been You've promised for, for a decade, hasn't it? These things are, are coming. Um, there is a whole... You know, huge potential, which by just uh, you know shutting the door. Tell me, as, as someone involved in R and D of in, for the wheat crop in this country, yes, what wheat farmers have approached you and said in the last ten years, we want GM wheat, we want you to develop genetically modified spring okay. wheat with aphid resistance. Have you had any demand for this that you use public funds? Let, let him answer that. that. Let him answer. Well, that. the first thing is, of course, the, the reason it's in spring wheat is because it's much easier to do in spring wheat. It would then be moved into winter wheat later. I mean, that's you know, that's that's, that's quite. Have any think. farmers asked you to do this here? Well, in this the reason, yes. Let's put it this way. Yes or no? Ten years ago. It's not quite as simple as that. Ten years ago, <laughs> farmers were demanding GM crops. At that time, it was rain. But then, because of you know, the build-up of, of, um, of, of anti-GM, the, the they farmers started backing, backing away from it. Um, so, you know, they're waiting to see what the market wants. But Obviously, We had are. a wheat farmer at Rothamsted today, a typical Lincolnshire wheat farmer, saying there is no demand for this in the wheat industry. In fact, in Britain, we grow masses of wheat so much that we're now talking about burning a million tonnes in the new ethanol... Well, in the, you on, know. on that note, I'm afraid I'm going to have to stop you. I think we're just at the beginning of this I argument so. again. We want this to And I hope you'll both come back yes, and join us and, uh, and do it again. We, we need to talk Extended. rather than protest. Indeed. Thank you very much indeed.